If you can understand the idea of a confidence interval, you'll be way ahead in understanding the rest of this statistics course. It's kind of the fundamental concept that opens the door to understanding hypothesis testing and a number of other big ideas. Here's the situation. Suppose that we have some distribution. Now that distribution I'm not showing in this picture, but suppose that we had that distribution and we started taking all the samples of size n. So there's some particular size n. I'm using that n down here in this formula. So I'm, I'm looking at all the samples of that particular size. Under certain conditions, for example, some of the conditions need to be that uh, that size n is less than 10% of the entire population. Secondly, that size n needs to be bigger than 30. And third, the original population that we're sampling from, the original distribution that we're sampling from, cannot be severely skewed. If those three situations are satisfied, then as I look at all these different samples of size n, the distribution of their means, so this becomes a distribution of sample means, will be normally distributed with the mean of those sample means being the mean of the original population. And the standard deviation of those sample means being the standard deviation of the original population divided by the square root of n. Now that gives us enormous power. Now look at what we're looking at here. So we've got this normal distribution. We know what its mean is, and we know what its standard deviation is. This little slider is allowing me to select a number of standard deviations that I am away from the mean. So a number of standard deviations below, and a number of standard deviations above. And then it's calculating the probability, or the area under the curve, between those that many standard deviations below the mean and that many standard deviations above the mean. Okay? So, the probability of picking one of all of the possible samples that would fit between here and here, between 0.84 standard deviations below the mean and 0.84 standard deviations above the mean, is going to be 0.6. So I can slide this slider Notice that it gets wider for that area to get bigger, of course. So if I wanted to, to be at 95, I don't know whether I can get that adjusted right to 95 on my slider or not. Okay, let's go to 96. <laughs> okay, so the area under this curve is 96. If I'm, if I'm picking a sample, finding the mean of that sample, the probability that that mean will be in between here is 96 percent. Okay, all right. Now let's bring this over because that uh, interval is exactly the right length. So do you see that x bar that I've got there? Suppose that that x bar is representing our uh, the mean of our sample. So 96 percent of the time that mean that x bar will end up between here and here, okay? The rest of the time, which isn't very much, about uh, 2 point, uh, uh, less than 2.5% of the time, it's going to be up here, and another 2.5% of the time, it's going to be down, down below here, okay? But any time, that that x bar ends up in this region here, then this interval is going to capture the mean. So here's what happens. When we have this original population, we do not know what its mean is. Suppose that we did know what its standard deviation was, then we could build this red interval at, at 
any particular percentage that we want. Here we made it 96 percent. It would be nice if I could make it 95. That's a 95 percent is a real popular one. There we are. And 95 percent. Okay, so that X bar, this X bar right here, has a 95% a chance of landing in here. The one sample that we pick, there's a 95% chance that it fits inside of here. Now, there's a chance that it fits out, that it misses. But that 95% chance is saying that, that we're 95% confident that this interval, this red interval, is going to capture the real mean. We don't know what the real mean is, but we're 95% confident that it's in between there. Okay, that's the idea of a confidence interval.